Hello world, my name is Tim Ruswick and welcome to another Cypherpunk devlog where I talk about the specifics of what we did in my game Cypherpunk, which is a stealth hacking roguelike. Uh, this week, this week was fun. Uh, I have 484 hours in this game at this point. Uh, most of it is programming because it's a procedural game, so we're trying to figure out the specifics of how uh, it works and all that stuff. And in a procedural game, most of it is programming. Let's talk a little bit about what I did this week, though. This week, we underwent an overhaul. I overhauled the UI. I've been talking a lot about how the inventory system was a little weird. Well, there really wasn't an inventory system, but there was a macro system and, and the abilities and stuff. So this week, what I spent a whole bunch of time on was a database in the middle there that you can pull up and all of your stuff goes into the database. So, uh, this was the result of a series of things that I have been trying to work on. I've been trying to simplify the game. Uh, so I put something in that would hopefully keep all your stuff in one place. That was, that was the goal. It's like, I don't want it to be super confusing to pick stuff up or how to use stuff. Um, another thing that I did was I actually made this little menu system or this little dialogue window system that when you discover an ability on the ground, uh, it highlights the ability and then it shows you a little dialogue window of what that thing does based on the icon. And uh, this was intentional because I wanted to make it easy to understand at a glance without you having to hover over with the mouse because the game doesn't use the mouse as a control. So it's kind of weird to, to require the mouse for uh, the for the tooltips and stuff to like show you what stuff does. So this little dialogue system, it's not perfect, um, but it does show you what the ability does and it shows you like how much it costs and, and the, the specifics and stuff. So I think it works out okay. Um, again, the, the whole goal behind all of this is to make a game that's somewhat accessible. I wanna make, I wanna make a deep, complex roguelike, but I wanna make it easy to learn and easily accessible to uh, people that, you know, want to play games of the genre, but they're just too complex or hard to learn. So I've been working really, really hard on that. With these two things, I feel like we took a step forward uh, towards the goal, towards the design goal of like making something a little bit easy to learn. Uh, if you can put all of your inventory in one spot and you can uh, show the player exactly what the things do, I think you are mostly there. Uh, the inventory, I feel like, does need a little bit of work. Like, for example, it doesn't actually show the key uh, to use, which I think is really, really important. If you have an inventory system and there's a button to use the inventory items, I feel like the game should show that button because um, watching playtests of this, I can see that, like, people know how to open the inventory because the database says alt, right? You can see the word alt. Alt is the button to open the inventory, but when you hover over stuff in your inventory, it doesn't say what button to use uh, to use the item. So people end up pressing Alt again, which closes the database. So little things like that that you miss in design and development, you can pick up in kind of the feedback stage. Um, another core change that we made to the game was that you can siphon chips now. And the reason is that people were just breaking a bunch of chips and they were uh, siphoning the resources. So I was like, all right, what if you can just siphon the chips directly? And the another thing that I don't know if you notice is we completely stripped the macro system. So the only way to play this game now is using the movement and the, uh, the abilities. And in addition to grabbing resources uh, out of blocks, the siphoning blocks allows you to get rid of them, to move through them because it brought up another unique challenge because we removed the laser, right? We had a little laser macro that you could run around and shoot and a little decryptor macro that you could decrypt chips with. Uh, but removing those things that break the blocks for you, you with procedural generation, you end up in scenarios where the blocks uh, block the path, just like that. And you can never have, like that turns a somewhat stupid bug into a game breaking bug if you can't get through them. So siphoning um will allow you to kind of get through some of the blocks or some of the areas this isn't perfect 
I'm not happy with it. Um, I'm sort of taking baby steps toward uh, toward my ultimate goal, which is accessibility and and understandability. And there are still plenty of problems with the game, but I think uh, we are closer to our goal than we've been. Uh, we're getting there. We're slowly learning these things. And again, I say we, but really I just mean me and Twitch chat, which by the way, if you want to watch this game uh, being developed live, I stream live on Twitch Thursdays and Fridays, 3 p.m. Eastern, twitch.tv slash Tim Russwick. You can check out the link down below and come hang out with me live uh, for the live stream. And uh, you can see the progress the game has made. But it, overall, I, I'm, I'm happy where we're headed. I think the database is a good step. I'm a little concerned about eliminating the directional control that came with macros because there was like directional control with the laser and stuff. And so now all the abilities are kind of limited to um, like horizontal or vertical, I guess, which I'm not happy with. But you know, every time you have a design solution to something, you end up with a challenge for something else. Uh, so it's a giant trade-off and a giant thing to kind of learn how all this stuff works. So uh, that's all I got for you this week. Uh, I appreciate you being part of the game so far. If you want to follow the game or you want to play the game, you can join uh, the Skullbox Studios Discord, which is a Discord specifically for uh, my games. And uh, it's separate from Game Dev Underground. So you can hit that link down below. It'll be, it'll be there ready to go. And then, like I said, I stream Thursdays and Fridays, 3 p.m. Eastern on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Tim Russell. You can watch me develop the game live and come hang out and give me some ideas because because I need that clarity. OK, so I appreciate you watching this video. Thank you very much for being a part of the uh, Game Dev Underground, the Tim Russell family. You guys are awesome. Uh, as a YouTuber, I'm supposed to say, like, hit the subscribe button and stuff and the bell, but I that shit doesn't work anyway. Yeah, <laughs> you don't get notifications that way anyway. So uh, I love you all. Thank you for being a part of Game Dev Underground, and uh, I'll see you in the next devlog.